Next, a special report from the Arctic, the front line of global warming, where climate change is happening quicker than anywhere else on our planet. Temperatures there are rising at three times the global average. It's causing snow and ice to melt, damaging vital ecosystems and contributing to rising sea levels. ITV News travelled to Svalbard, the Norwegian archipelago on the Arctic Circle. A look at the data here shows how average temperatures have consistently risen over the past 20 years. In the first of our special reports from the Arctic, our science correspondent Martin Stew was embedded with researchers in Ni Alessund. It's just a few hundred miles from the North Pole and is where scientists are studying the worrying impact of climate change on the Earth. We're flying into the world's most northern settlement. Through the windows, glimpses of glaciers snaking through Svalbard's mountainous terrain. Just 700 miles from the North Pole, Neolisund is less frozen than I'd expected. Snowmelt in the summer is normal, but this area is warming and fast. Thomas is part of a French team who have been releasing weather balloons here since the 80s. Information pinged back to Earth and shared around the world. Uh, can I launch the balloon today? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. Thank you. Bye. Their data contributes to records which have shown winter temperatures in Neolisund have risen by nearly 8 degrees in the last 50 years. It's a kind of a laboratory for global warming and in fact Neolisund, in general Svalbard, is getting warmer of more than three times uh, compared to the other places on, world, on the world. This town was built for coal. Now its inhabitants are mining data. Ten countries have bases here from Germany to Japan and Italy to India, drawn together at the top of the world. So this will be at 15 meter depth in order to collect the upper ocean data. So Arrol and his team collecting... have engineered monitors which we moored up to 150 meters deep in the fjord. You're an engineer from India, but you're working with lots of other countries too. Yeah, exactly. As all the countries in the world are worried about climate change, even India is also worried. So that is why India has stepped in, into this act, particular activity. And this data collector, whatever, is being shared with the global community. We head out onto the fjord with a British crew, lashed not by snow, but rain and Arctic spray. A look at sea ice in July over the decades shows how it's receded from connecting Svalbard to the North Pole, even in the summer, to leaving ice-free seas around the islands. This ice we see in the fjord isn't from the sea, but has carved off glaciers on land. The darker the blue, the deeper and older the ice. It's a natural process happening unnaturally fast. So when, when these charts were made, where we're sailing right now, was land? Or ice? Well, yeah, land or ice, yes. And that would have been seen as the edge of the uh, coastline. It wasn't that long ago that locals thought that land was a peninsula, but now it's clearly been exposed as an island as the glacier has retreated, melting away up the valley. In this picture from 1936, our boat would have been in the middle of this glacier. It's been retreating up to a kilometre a decade since. Scientists estimate the speed of glacial ice loss will double by the end of the century. The Arctic, as well as the Antarctic, is part of the Earth's air conditioning system, if you like, kind of the refrigeration unit for the globe. It's where the globe loses its excess heat. So we're damaging that system. We're driving ever warmer temperatures across the, across the rest of the globe. So the international effort here, the 10 countries, is really important to increase our understanding about that process and then what we can do to counteract it. That means sharing everything, including valuable data, even with countries it's more unusual to cooperate with. It's absolutely vital that, that uh, science is, is open, it's transparent, it's shared, because it costs carbon, it costs money to get that data, and it's precious and valuable. And so it shouldn't just be one team that uses it, it should be available to everyone. A truly global effort to understand global warming, predicting how our planet could change and how best to protect all of us who live here. Uh, we can speak to Martin now, who's at the base in the Arctic Circle tonight. Martin, these changes are really quite striking, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely correct. I mean, we are 79 degrees north and it is 
raining here in the Arctic Circle. Now in the summer, that's not that unusual, but what scientists are anecdotally telling me is that they've noticed that happening as late as December, even January. And that's a problem for many reasons, just one of which is if rain falls on the ground and then freezes over the greenery that wildlife like reindeers eat, they can starve and die. That's just one small anecdotal evidence. But what's being built up here is this huge database of really important scientific information. They've actually been British scientists recording things here on this site since the 1930s. And it is all building up this picture of a changing climate. And the climate doesn't just affect here, it affects around the world and affects us back in the UK as well. And Martin, as you said, British scientists are at the heart of the research there. But what is the UK doing to tackle the cause of climate change? Yeah, well, it's an interesting one, isn't it? There's a lot of controversy around net zero and how fast you try and pursue that. I, I spoke in the last hour to Dr James Richardson. Now, he's the, the current boss of the Climate Change Committee. They're a, a public funded body and their job is to... Uh, advise, but also scrutinise the government over what it's doing to hit our net zero targets. And he said to me, and I quote, this is a real opportunity for the UK government to recapture its leadership after a sense of ambition and pace over the previous couple of years had gone awry. Now, he said that the data, the evidence, the research that's going on here adds to a huge body of work going around the world that just shows that climate change is real and that man-made emissions are contributing to that. And what he said now is that we need real change. And there are a couple of key things coming up at which that change could happen. Now, the next big target for the UK on the step to net zero by 2050 is 2035. We need to get a lot of cuts in by then. And what we have coming up in November is COP in Baku, one of the big climate conferences. And before that, it's hoped the government will publish its plans and what it's going to do to try and hit those 2035 targets. The Climate Change Committee is going to be advising the government in October as well on what it recommends to do. Things like, for example, cutting electricity bills so it becomes cheaper to fit things like heat pumps into your home or have an electric car. They're the sorts of ideas which are being banded around. The Climate Change Committee says this is a real opportunity for the new government, which it says has shown more leadership than over the last couple of years, but it wants to see more.